Hey there everybody, welcome back to today's Let's Play of Higurashi When They Cry. We are on the Totoro Garashi chapter, uh, this should be episode 5 of our series. Uh, yeah, okay. Boop, good. Um, I apologize, it's been like about 3 weeks I think since we played our, our last episode of this. It's just, summer usually gets to be like a pretty crazy time for me. And I happened to look at my videos today and I was like, oh wow, it's been like 3 weeks since we played Higurashi. So, I'm gonna try and get on a better schedule about it, but I just wanted to, you know, let's just, let's just keep it rolling. Um, morning, Kichi. I did not sleep well last night at all. My mother could tell from a single glance. I had the worst dreams. Nightmares, very ominous dreams. One after the other, again and again. I woke up after each one, but could never even remember a fraction of what they have been about. But it was like those dreams were predicting something unpleasant. And I woke up in a terrible mood. Hey now. Every day has been calm and fun before today, right? Today should continue on, unchanging. And yet, anxiety was the only emotion growing within me. Why was that? Nightmares reflect your own anxiety. They show an uneasy mind that which you wouldn't admit to normally. Yesterday, I remembered the ominous conversations about Satoshi I had with Shion, Mion, and Rena. That's right, so in our previous chapter, um, we learned a little bit more about Satoshi, and Reina had, like, a little breakdown about Oyashiro's curse. Right. My mind felt like it was in a black fog, because we had talked about that. If I... If I'd lived every day without causing a fuss, my reward would be even more peaceful days. I understood that. So what did I cause such discord? But now that I thought about it calmly, a simple verbal slip on my part couldn't possibly change the world. Yeah. As long as I'm sorry for doing it and never talk about it again... There's nothing that anyone can blame me for, right? Besides, how would my fate possibly change just because I talked about that? Nothing was going to change. Yeah. Nothing would change. Nothing would change, nothing would change. Haha. -ha. Okay, Ichi. How naive. That's a creepy smile. Thanks, Mom. Finally cheered up enough to smile and Mom slapped me right back down. Now I was irritated again. Thanks, Mom. Wasn't much time left before I had to meet up with Rena. I frantically started to get ready to go to school. Dashed out the front door. The morning air was far more refreshing than the water on my face. That's right, Keiichi Maibara. If you're sorry about it and reflect upon your mistakes, that's enough. Let's pull yourself together and get to school. And return to fun, enjoyable days. Everyone laughs, plays, and just has a good time. I'll be nice to Sadako as an apology, too. Yeah. Wasn't I supposed to be her nini until Satoshi got back? Satoshi's not coming back, honey. Well. Reina, too, looked nothing like she had yesterday when she said that weird stuff. If I could only forget, then I could still act like nothing had happened. So I called out to her with all the energy I could muster. Oh! I mean, everything seems okay so far. There was a little time before the same old morning homeroom began, but Satoko and Rika-chan were unusually absent. Maybe they went to play somewhere. However, looking over and seeing none of their things, so it looked like they really hadn't come to school. Well, that's a flag. Rena seemed to be enjoying herself thinking about what their excuse for being late would be. Me said something nonsensical as well, imagining how funny the reason they were late must have been. I had only come to school to see their energetic faces since I figured it would get rid of these feelings I have, but the load on my chest remained where it was. Hey yo. The load on my chest. Keiichi. It wasn't very pleasant at all. Our teacher finally arrived. Then I finally heard the pitter patter of footsteps running down the hall. Clatter. Rika chan was the first to run through the open door. And then Satoko. Didn't come. It was unusual for Rika chan to be late, but. Equally unusual for Satoko, a ball of energy, to be absent at all. 
Everyone's eyes were wide at the series of strange events. Teacher walked over to Rika-chan and they started talking in hushed tones. Why is Satoko late? Yeah, me too. Why now? And I most wanted to see Satoko's energetic face. The unease that had been building since last night tightened within my chest. Mion laughed indecently. Normally I would laugh along with her, but right now I just didn't feel like it. Oh, is she talking about like having her first period, maybe? I don't know why else why else being sick would be indecent, but I'm guessing that might be it. I don't think so. What is going on with Satoko? Home mended and we went to talk to Rika-chan in the short time we had before first period started. Very aware of my gloom this morning, so I strove to keep my tone cheerful. I petted Rika-chan's head the same way she always did, but she didn't cheer up at all. Me. For instance, she got a fever from playing around too much yesterday. If that had been her response, I would have accepted it in a flash. But the atmosphere around Rika-chan felt somehow heavy. It was a little weird and actually made me uh, made my unease worse. It's not a period. Mion acting just like a club president pulled me back to my chair. Rika-chan's gaze immediately fell back to her desk and she hung her head gloomily. Rika-chan had said something on and Sadako might be a little bit late. They were living together, weren't they? Then she would have known for sure. She wouldn't have said might. Didn't understand why she was absent. That made me all the more anxious. Damn it. What's going on today? It's like we started off on the wrong foot and it wasn't going to get any better. Marina noticed how I looked and whispered to me while the teacher wasn't looking. Thought of jokingly saying, then don't look at me, but I didn't even feel like doing that. I won't tease you. Rena said this, looking me straight in the eye. Huh? Rena's eyes widened for a moment, not understanding what I meant, but she remained silent and listened. Uh,そうだね。毎日楽しいよ。きっと今日も楽しくなる。絶対にそうなるって自信が持てるか。You don't know, do you, Rena? You have no idea. Rena, feeling perplexed, couldn't think of something to say. I didn't blame her. What I was trying to say seemed a little confusing, even to me. Rena nodded gently. わたしたちはいいことばかりは続かないって楽しいことの裏側を時々恐れるよね。それってちょっぴり悲しいことだけど、でもそのおかげで私たちは楽しい毎日がずっと続くように努力することを覚えたんだよ。
I just got very dark. Like if there was a volcanic eruption tomorrow and everyone died. That's terrible. Yeah. Rena. Um, feel terrible. You'd have survivor's guilt. Imagine myself being that sole survivor in the ruins of Hinamazawa. Rubble and the bodies of friends lying in heaps at my feet. It was such an abhorrent sight. Was it sadder that all my friends had died? Was it sadder that I couldn't have died with them? Didn't know which, but I'd probably cry a lot. Didn't want to consider such a horrible event to be my destiny, but... What a very adult thing to say, Rena. それに気づくのはとても多くの人たちは日々の幸せに奉食してるよ。今日と同じ明日が訪れると信じきってるから今日してやれる優しさを明日に送ってしまう。She's brought, she's a lot more mature and a lot wiser than she pretends to be. She's not just like this airhead. Rena was usually cheerful and silly, but right now she wasn't like that at all. She was taking my trouble seriously. A little bit reassuring. でも ケイチ君はそれに気づけた。それはとても素敵なことだと思う。だからその不安な気持ち大切にしてもいいと思うの。この不安を大切に。そう。明日には大災害でみんな死んじゃうかもしれない。だから今日みんなにいっぱい優し
the sun remained bright in the sky. The same normal day as always. So then, why? As I pondered, Miranda's chopsticks reached out in front of my face and stole the fried chicken out of my bento. Miranda, that's my chicken. <laughs> Miranda tossed the entire piece into her mouth and began munching on it, her expression one of bliss. Rikishan, also behind the curve, smiled again and went for someone else's bento. As I sat there, dazed at how quickly everyone had changed, Myrna sent a wink over to me. Come on, Keiichi kun. Live life to the fullest. That way, if a volcano erupts tomorrow, it'll be okay. Stuff your fat face full of delicious chicken. Live for today. This is serious. Get the meatball. Stuffed the meat into my mouth and contracted a clumsy smile. Played along as if trying to fool myself. But as I did, it rapidly became less and less of an act. Satoko still wasn't here. But at some point, we regained our lively lunchtime. We had fun. We smiled. We fooled around. Thanks, everyone. It was definitely the best thing to do. This way, when Sadako suddenly dropped by, we would welcome her with our best smiles. The more I smiled, the more I felt the anxiety from this morning clearing away. I think something's wrong. Something's wrong with Sadako. Otherwise, Reina would have told us. Or, not Reina, um... Rika. Rika would have told us. Everyone took a deep breath and brought their faces together, locking shoulders. And then... <laughs> That's terrifying. Everyone laughed uproariously from their stomachs, trying to laugh out all the bad stuff accumulating in them. By the time our bento boxes were empty, everyone was right as rain. Something's wrong. That's how these usually start. Things start off like the first half is like really fun. There's a lot of fun things happening and then bad shit goes down. Hmm. Having heard our friendly banter, Kamita-kun and Okamura-kun walked up and timidly spoke to us. They grinned dryly and scratched their heads. <laughs> Don't believe what you hear about Butter doing the trick. Why would anyone think Butter would remove sensor bars from porn magazines? What? You mean I wasted all my mom's butter for nothing? Now what we're here for, said Tomita-kun, elbowing Okimura-kun. On the second floor? How tall do you think we are? We were like 10 feet tall, we could just reach up and get it? Mitakun and Okamura-kun conversed for a short time, then gave their reply. Yeah, how's that gonna work? Oh, blackmail. That's not doing me any favors. That's blackmail. Also, how does how does teacher Chie not know that Keiichi is sleeping? There's like like 15 kids in her classroom. Oh, 
おとなしく後輩たちの脅迫に屈したら<笑> Now Mion was getting on my nerves. Suddenly it came to me, and I took Tomita Kun and Okamura Kun's hands. Wakata, Oreno Ko Sanda, Boro Totte Arkara, Inemino Kenri, Oreni Kre. Miro Mion, Ora Chanto Kenri, Moratazo. Demo Omaewa Moratte Naya, Tomita Kun, Okamura Kun, Mion Ga Inebri Sara. Oh, the flip flop. We flipped it. We flipped the script. Rena and Rika chan began to cackle at Keiji Kun's victory. Take that, Mion. I wasn't sure how the ball managed to get stuck up there, but it was planted firmly in the school building's second floor gutter. Took a bamboo pole and poked the ball with it. Damn. Damn, it's hard. Come on. <laughs> Ball rolled down the gutter and fell down behind the school building. My underclassmen ran over in that direction, leaving me by myself. Mission complete, I guess. Sheesh. Still a lot of time left until lunch break was over. Guess I should go back to the classroom. I'd absorb myself in a silly conversation with everyone and wait for afternoon classes. Just when I thought that and turned toward the entrance, someone suddenly called out to me. Is it Sadako? No. It's Oishi-san. Why are you talking to me, Oishi? Middle-aged man, I didn't know. Maybe I'd passed by him a few times and had seen his face, but I didn't know him. When his half-smile deepened, something within me shuddered with fear. There's no basis for that. No reason. But I shuddered. Somewhat confused about these emotions, not quite understanding them myself. So this is our Tatagarashi is like the third episode in the Higarashi series. This is the third time we're meeting Oishi, and every time we meet him, there's usually like a murder or someone's about to be killed, or he's like trying to interrogate us about some crime or something that's going on. So each time we start a new episode, it's like our memories reset. So this is really our first time meeting him, but we've met him two other times before. One thing I could say, though, nobody but teachers and students should be at school. This person shouldn't have been here. Felt less of a tremble and more of a sense of dread, like a brilliantly colored, poisonous caterpillar was crawling across my forehead. A feeling of disgust that neither itchy nor gross could describe as the frizzly, dreadful hair that rubbed against my brow. I didn't even want to see his face. I wanted to jump backwards and run away. An unpleasant feeling for which I didn't even know the cause. The other side of myself has nothing but questions. Hey, what are you doing? What are you disgusted by? This is the first time I've met him. you've met him. It's rude to hate someone for no reason. No answers were coming. I held my silence, waiting. A damp sweat running down my forehead. When he saw that, we she thought maybe he was being intimidating and gave me a relaxed smile. Ah, <laughs> was a little suspicious. Fished through various pockets, then finally found his police ID and showed it to me, grinning dryly. I may have been trying to use those clumsy seeming actions to ease my anxiety, but I could definitely say it didn't work. Why was I this nervous? There was a reason, of course. I wanted today to be the same as before, then today didn't need someone who hadn't been here back then. The fact that a man who wasn't here yesterday showed up today meant that today would be a different day than those before it. That would mark the end of the fun and happy days. I gulped and erased that ominous conclusion from my mind. Calm down, Keiji Maibara. Just an old guy who looks kind of perverted and came from the police department. Don't go deciding that the fun times are over. He just came here because of his job. Yeah, just for his job. If he's working, then he would normally go to the teacher's lounge, right? The fact that he spoke to me... Yes, it must have been to ask where it was. I think he's probably looking for us. I didn't want to look at this man for another second, so I started pushing things along. Oishu, however, didn't seem to have any interest in the teacher's lounge. Ah, yeah, yeah. 
職員室にはそんなに用事はないんですそれよりお友達を呼んでもらいたいんですが<笑> Call a friend of mine? お友達誰です女の子です北条さと子さんを呼んできてもらえませんか Why are you looking for Sadako? My consciousness grew faint. I was about to pass out. Yes. My anxiety was realized. A dreadful, disgusting caterpillar was looking at me, about to crawl into my ear. Its frizzly, dreadful hair was touching my ear cavity. So bad it felt. I don't like this. Why? Why, of all people, was it Satoko? Why would a police officer come here in the middle of the day for something that wasn't important? This man was strange. And a liar. I could smell it. And it smelled bad. Just a whiff of it made me want to grimace. I knew that this man couldn't possibly be here to deliver her lost wallet or anything. I couldn't imagine what needed from Sadako, but it had to be something unpleasant.、Uh. My throat stung with burning pain. Burned like a parched, crevice wasteland. Wasteland broke apart deep in my throat and brought out the words from deep in my mind.、Uh, you, you tell him, Keiichi. I don't think Sadako needs anything from you. Can you go away? Can you please, like, fuck off, Oishi? Can you, like, Bye. Wishy probably hadn't expected that reply. So they're surprised for a few moments. I did as, I did as well. I hadn't thought words like that could ever come out of my mouth. Things might still work out. If I may have shown up out of the blue, but if I drove them off, maybe I could make it so that it never happened. If I could do that, then I can get back. The peace we had until yesterday, I could get it back. No. <laughs> これは手厳しいなあなたサトコさんのマネージャーさんです I'm her nini アポイントメントがないと面会は叶いませんか<笑>話がしたいだけなら電話ですればいいじゃないですか日中学校にまで押しかけてくるなんて明らかに異常です Breaking through a dam would have been the perfect analogy to use Why not like this old man? Man shouldn't have been there. He needed to make it so this man wasn't here. Childish, selfish emotions bubbled up from the depths of my mind, and they each came out of my mouth just as it had been formed. Not liking the guy was my own problem. But to say things so bluntly to him? Even I thought I was crazy. <laughs> Wishy grinned and scratched at his sweaty throat. Even as he feigned stupidity, I could tell he was irritated. Hey, Keiichi Maibara, why am I looking for a fight with this old policeman here? It's not like he brought the gift of misfortune with him, all wrapped up in paper, right? Right. It wasn't like he had brought a package of misfortune with him and was asking me to sign. Here, please. Rationally speaking, I understood all that. So then, why was I so. Finally, I l o s t d Iluishi in a game of silence, and he gave a big sigh. Then he addressed a few of my female underclassmen running around nearby. Ah, Moshi Moshi, Kimitachi, Choto Idas Kama, Hojo Satoko san, or Yondekito Shindus Mane. My underclassmen tried to smile and reply, but they noticed the oddly stiff air atmosphere around me and seemed hesitant to give a quick answer. Shouldn't you, like, like, need parental consent? Where is our teacher? Where is the principal? Why is this, this stranger here? Talking to these children. Face remained smiling, but his tone was clearly one of ill humor. Such conspicuous spite caused my underclassmen, who had answered honestly, to cringe in fear. So this <laughs> He was smiling broadly, but the way he laughed didn't make me feel better at all. 
When he noticed that his laughter wasn't getting anyone else to laugh with him, he immediately stopped. Grabbed the girls by the shoulders so they wouldn't run away and crouched down to address them at eye level. The girls flinched away from the sharp, piercing light in his eyes. And in exchange for their release, they didn't resist and told him my name. Said my full name. It was all he said, and yet I couldn't help but shudder. Like he had grabbed me by the collar with just those words. I'm talking about my family. ね、ね、2回ほど東京の大展覧会に出展されてるそうじゃないですか。どんな立派な絵を描かれるかは存じませんがね。お母さんも知的そうな方じゃないですか。音楽で来てきましたよ。どこぞの女子大を出られてるそ
Why does he want to talk to the doctor? Coach didn't display a shred of that weird behavior he'd shown at the baseball game and barbecue. He stared steadily at Oishi and fought so that he would release me. Chances were terribly bad, of course. Compared to the relaxed Oishi, Coach seemed like he was being defeated mentally. It made sense. Coach had a somewhat narrow stature, but Oishi's body was packed with muscles. It wasn't even a contest. Coach was fighting for me without taking a step back. Beads of sweat formed on his face, and though he paled, he was fighting for my sake. Mm. <laughs> Suddenly, Oishi laughed and let go of my shoulders. Body exhausted, I fell right into my backside. Yeah, go go call my mom and dad, and let's let's get this guy like reprimanded. You shouldn't be here talking to kids. You shouldn't be here putting your hands on kids. From my shoulders, Ruishi had lashed onto them. Pain from falling over went away quickly, but this pain was lingering. Get out of here with this masculine freaking toxicity bullshit. Get out of here. I wanted to retort, but couldn't think of anything witty. Coach let me in shoulder and walked beside me. Thank you. Thank you, Coach, for having our back. <laughs> Wishy san waved his hand sarcastically, pivoted around, and headed to the car parked by the school gates. Without turning back around, he got in and started the engine. Damn it. Who, who the hell was he, damn it? He's a piece of shit is what he is. Karado Oishi. Just like I thought, my gut instinct wasn't wrong. He would be the one. The one to bring unhappiness, misfortune, something that would ruin our peace. Shit, I won't accept it. All these fun days can't possibly end just because some guy like him showed up. I won't. I won't accept it. Coach seemed to be familiar with the school, so he brought me to the nurse's office without much trouble. Girls from my class came along as well, looking worried. Our teacher and the principal, having noticed the disturbance, came to see what was the matter. Yeah, I'm hurt. I just had a grown-ass man put his, put his hands on me. Where were you, Teacher Chie? Coach gently interrupted the girls, trying to explain. いえ、ちょっと転んで<笑> gave him a deep bow. Then the coach was acquainted with the adults at school. Why are we not telling them what happened? So opened the doors to the nurse's office, but there wasn't a nurse in there or anything. I figured. Never seen anyone but Chie-sensei and the principal working here. Coach didn't seem to mind the fact that there was no nurse and quickly made his way into the nurse's office. He instructed me to sit down and started washing his hands in the sink. Oh, I get it. He's the coach for the boys' baseball team. Must be pretty used to treating wounds with first aid. Hold up my shirt and showed him my shoulder. No bruise, not even nail marks. Yet it hurt so much I thought my shoulders would be crushed. And the pain had disappeared without a trace, so he knew how to hurt us without leaving a mark. 
Smart. Heard so much, but not so much as a bruise remained. It means he's used to doing that. It means he's an asshole. Used to it, huh? あいつを怒らせて、得をすることは何もありませんからね。自宅に制服警官を連れて押しかけてきたら、ご家族だっていい気持ちはしないでしょ。それは確かに。しかし、何があったんです。前原さんがあいつと喧嘩になるなんて。Pooch's gaze lowered and his expression clouded a bit. Somehow that gesture seemed to be saying Oishi was bound to come to Sadako and did, and that it was no laughing matter. <laughs> Coach fell silent and thought. Quietly, he took a compress out of the first aid kit and put it on me. Clinging to Sadako. Coach mumbled to himself. Coach didn't answer, but the lack of a denial served well enough. What on earth did the policeman, probably a detective or something, need from Sadako? What mistake had led a detective to cling to the sweetly smiling Sadako? Is it, is it Satoshi related? We have just heard about it, actually. Well, I knew a few things about it, certainly. Coach smiled thinly and dryly. So you know, he said, dropping his gaze. If I recalled correctly, there was an accident on a viewing platform at the public park she'd gone to with her family, and her parents died. And then it was just Big Brother and Little Sister. And then she was with Rika-chan, and, um... Right, and I think the wife is the one that died. Her parents died in the accident, and Satoshi ran away, leaving only Sadako to start living with Rika-chan. Known that much, but it was the first time I heard they'd been brought to their uncle and aunt. Coach normally picked his words politely, so when he came out and said they didn't deserve respect, it made me wonder what kind of people they were. Satoko-chan's family was a dam in the dam, and the family was a dam. Bit by bit, Coach told me about the numerous agonies the Hojo siblings had suffered at their uncle's house. As their guardians, their aunt and uncle sucked up everything belonging to their immediate family. Satoko and Satoshi were crammed into a small room, and their lives were laden with things that were miserable for both their bodies and minds. In the first place, since apparently their aunt and uncle weren't on good terms, there was no end to their fighting. And as if in revenge for that, whenever they saw Satoko or Satoshi's face, they would find fault with them, scold them, yell at them, strike them, and take away Mills' as punishment. Oh, so they were abusive. I kind of figured they were pieces of shit. I couldn't imagine it, and I didn't want to. That was how I honestly felt. But at the very least, Sadako wasn't like that anymore. She may have had a miserable life in the past, but it was different now. Something happened to change that life. Oh, she was beaten to death. Interesting. Interesting. 
Two days later, the deviant arrested for drug use confessed to further offenses, and the incident was resolved. However, though it was resolved, no one knew whether the part about it being Oyushiro-sama's curse was true or not. おやしろ様の祟りを大層怖がり逃げ出して雲隠れしてしまったそうです聞いた話では沖の宮辺りの that man, Oishi? Coach lowered his voice a bit, as if being aware of his surroundings. The events that just occurred came back to me. The hard to describe ominous sensation I felt from him came back to me. Well, it is a little bit weird that, that every day on the Watanagashi Festival for like the last four years, someone dies and someone disappears. I mean, that is a little bit odd. Except it. The incidents were all solved and a detective supposedly with the fleet department. Didn't accept that? Oishinokodo. Door flew open with a rattle and Mion came rushing in. Rena and Rika chan came running in a few steps behind her and then Tamita kun, Okamura kun, and a few more of our classmates. I wasn't being strangled, but I was definitely in pain. It's not the kids' fault, they're just little kids. Mion yelled at her classmates, bearing her fangs. Tomita kun and the others hung their heads in silence. Yeah. Mion and Shion both really hate Oishi. Mion kicked the floor with her heel a few times, her temper running hot. Our teacher, overhearing the commotion, arrived as well. Mion was letting her emotions get the best of her, so Marina stepped in instead and let everyone out of the nurse's office. The detective from Okinomiya Station, Corrado Oishi. It looked like the first impression I'd gotten from him hadn't been mistaken. Satoko's absence had amplified the vague apprehensions I'd felt since yesterday, and Oishi's appearance basically sealed the deal. Are you trying to hit hit that with our teacher? What are you doing? Don't be so humble, he said, smiling easily. Now, now you got weird again. I was on your side up until that sentence. The usual, for coach anyway, parting words, he instead continued. では、大した怪我ではありませんが、幹部を揉んだりするようなことは、くれぐれも避けてください。もしも高熱が出たり、腫れたりするようなことがあったら、すぐに連絡してくださいね。
そんなことはないと思いますがあそうだ監督さっきみんなが来る直前何か言ってましたよね大石のことをお社様のなんとかって He was about to leave the nurse's office Coach placed a hand on the door and stopped ああお社様の使いですよもちろん悪口ですよね。Sure、like、he goes the He's definitely an asshole. I don't know if he's a servant to the curse, but. マイバルさんは、ひなみざわで毎年、ワタナガシのヨルニオホル、ひなみざわムラ、レンゾクカイシジゲン。We know those. え、レンゾクカイシえ Now that I thought about it, I did seem to remember overhearing Miro or someone else's class talking about like a ghost story. On festival day in June, one person would always die, and another person would be spirited away, but they seem to call it demoning away here. What a fine story that was. I figured they made it up to scare me, but it was true. おやしろさまの使いとよっなぜですかあの男がその年のたたりの犠牲者を決めていると噂されていたサクリスはなぜジュンキムラウンドおいしゅうスターペイングフリクンビジネスヒノミザワなくなったり消えたりする人たちの多くがあの男の必要な訪問を受けているからです For years ago it was known that the victim of the dismemberment Rumored to be the sacrifice, had been seeing Oishi numerous times leading up to the incident. Sacrifices three years ago were Sadako's parents. Right before their accidental deaths, Oishi had apparently visited their home. When it disappeared two years ago was Rika chan's mother. And again, people know that before she vanished, Oishi had been talking to her extremely frequently. When it disappeared last year, Sadako's older brother, Satoshi. Satoshi, too, had apparently been approached by Oishi many times before he vanished. And then this year, this time, Oishi was trying to contact Sadako? This isn't a freaking joke, Doctor. Hadn't said that because of the rumors of Oishi being Oishi Osama's servant, or his contacting someone foreshadowing who would be the sacrifice that year. It was because the ominous hatred I felt towards Oishi was becoming more substantiated, more real. サトコ、今日欠席したじゃないですか。え、そうなんですか。Yeah. This, this can't all be a coincidence. Something's going on. It looks like news to Coach. I thought he might have known why Satoko was absent today, but. では失礼します。前原君も早くみんなのところに行って安心させてあげるといいでしょう。そうですね。そうします。Hmm. Clatter. w a t c h out the nurse's office and headed towards the teacher's lounge. Hmm. Freaking Oishi, man. Every chapter, he's always a dick. Oh, we got new tips, research notes, and Oishi's post memo. Alright. Let's see. And we got an achievement better left untold. Okay, new tips.、Uh, this one. The Hojo family. Every year, Oishiro Sama's curse claims two victims. It means that with four years in a row, there have been eight now. But it's worthwhile to note that half of them have been members of this family. Note, the curse on the second year, a certain falling accident, involved the death of a Hojo, a dam proponent, and the disappearance of his wife. She was pronounced dead the following year after being considered to have vanished under perilous circumstances. The curse on the fourth year involved the death of the Hojo sibling's aunt, who was then their foster mother, and the disappearance of the elder brother. The Hojo family is a poor one, and it's hard to say Mr. Hojo's job went very well. Apparently, upon re employment via family connections, there was a plan for them to return to the home of the mother's side of the family. For Mr. Hojo, the eviction due to the Hinamizawa Dam project and the payment of a large amount of compensation money was essentially a windfall. Mr. Hojo aggressively accepted the Ministry of Construction's negotiations from an early stage and selected others from Hinomizawa who were also dam proponents. It was rumored he had been bought out by the Ministry of Construction for doing so, but the truth is unknown. However, the dam proponents were the vastly outnumbered minority. In addition, 
as the Sonazaki family strengthened its own foundation and promised support against the dam, all of the proponents saved from Mr. Hojo switched over to the anti-dam side. At this point, Hinomizawa was completely united against the dam, and Mr. Hojo was held up to ridicule as a stooge of the dam project's proponents. He was, essentially, used as a scapegoat for the anti-dam coalition. In the end, the dam project collapsed with Oyashiro Osama's curse and the dismemberment incident. However, punishment towards the bitter enemies supporting the dam project continues to this day. There are not many left today who supported the dam project, nor who had a negative reputation at the time. If there were any candidates left for the curse, it's the husband of the housewife who was beaten to death last year, Tepe Hojo. Mr. Hojo's daughter, Satoko Hojo. Strangely, these two are the only candidates left. Will this year's curse come down to the two of them? There's more than enough value in observing them both. Hmm. I wonder whose research notes these are. Because in the past, the research notes have usually been from Takano. I don't think we've met her yet in this um, in this episode, but they're usually Takano's notes. Oishi's post-memo. To Oishi-san, there was a call from you from Section 4's Chief Shigaharu. Apparently the soldered corpse in the Uikijawa, Uikijawa River is related to the S group, as we thought. We're still verifying what happened behind the scenes, but... Apparently, the deceased filled up dozens of self-created fictional bank accounts to their limits with money from the S-Group, reaching around 100 million yen. It appears there were three or four men with former S-Group connections involved in this. They have already disappeared along with millions of yen. The deceased was tortured on that point for information, and she was clearly slaughtered as an example to others. There are apparently some real wizards chasing in the people who disappeared. They're also spreading letters to related Yakuza groups not to harbor them. There's still no evidence that Tepe Hojo is one of those people. From what Chief Shigaharu has seen, nothing's been announced. Precision dependent, this man wasn't trusted at all. Tepe Hojo has left his apartment in Okinomiya and has returned to his former residence in Hinomizawa. Wait, he's back in town? He's back in Hinomizawa? Does Oishi know that? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, this has been um, chapter five of our Tatar Garashi chapter. Stay tuned and I'll have more episodes up uh, this week and next week. I'm going to try and get on a better schedule so I can get more of this done. Um, this is the only game series I'm playing right now. I might also be doing some live streaming. So if you're interested in um, PS2 survival horror titles, I'm going to have Rule of Rose, Haunting Ground, and Clock Tower 3 in the next couple of weeks um, that I'm going to be playing live. So stay tuned and you know follow my page and, and my Twitter page for updates. But um, if you want to see me live stream, I'm going to be doing some of those too. But uh, I appreciate y'all watching, and I will catch you for the next one. Peace.